I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Sherry. And this is our cat, Lily. This is Cinder. We've got the truck. We've got the trailer. And we're ready for our RV travel class. Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Sherry. And we have Cinder with us too, so she might pop in and out of the screen here. But our uh, video here is to kind of focus on our past and our present with RVing. And one of the first things that we're going to talk about is what RVs we've had in the past. So uh, it's kind of a long list, but we'll kind of not tell you the whole future of them. But we went from uh, using a Layton trailer when we had kids and later into a Terry trailer uh, with this, our first slide. And we've still had some of the kids with us. And then um, later on, we uh, actually uh, had the opportunity after the kids were gone to sell everything and uh, uh, go off uh, full timing in 2006 and that and we bought a new truck and we'll talk about the truck later and got our first fifth wheel and we actually traveled full time for about three quarters of a year and the fifth wheel we had was a montana 20... 20 34 oh excuse me 34 foot montana trailer what else um and we also got a <laughs> 2002 diesel pickup at the same time and I'll talk more about the, the pickup in a little bit um, just to kind of move along quick so we don't have too long a video for you we uh, uh, later on had the opportunity to move into a, um, a motor home uh, a new 40 foot Fleetwood uh, with four slides and we actually did a lot of full timing and part timing in that and we'll talk about that um, as we go and as time has gone on, there was actually a time that we moved out of RVing. And later, uh, uh, about three years ago, we were actually bought a comfort trailer. Which surprised me, because I never thought I'd buy a trailer again. But it had three slides in it. It was a 29 foot. And it was an awesome trailer. The only thing we didn't like was... <laughs> the bedroom. The bedroom. It was really tight. We barely had to squeak around the you know walking around the bed and that was it and storage storage and storage fine. and it was only it was a queen size bed um which is okay but it did it was very very tight so closer we're getting to our retirement or when we uh, think we might have the opportunity to maybe do more with our rvs um we decided that was we're going to go back to a fifth wheel and uh not a motorhome but a, a fifth wheel and we went with the Montana a 2013 3625 RE which means rear entertainment um, fifth wheel and we're still using our 2002 Ford F350 Dually um, club cab and the reason we like that truck so much and we're going to try to hold on to that so is it's the last of the Fords that have the 7.3 liter engine in it and uh, it's an awesome truck so my goal is to keep that truck running as long as I can because I don't think I can get a, a an engine as good as that. Maybe the new ones, but we really like our truck and it's paid for. And it's paid for. <laughs> That's always a plus. Yes. So with all those uh, um, different kinds of models that we've used, um, my question to you, and I'll answer too, but what was your favorite? So each one had its own unique scenario. Uh, when we had children, I really liked the, the Terry because it had um, a lot of sleeping room. You know, the quality definitely was not as nice as the fifth wheel or the motor home, but it was really nice because we had kids. Um, when it, we became empty nesters and it was just Rob and I, I was kind of torn between the Class A motor home and the fifth wheel. I like the motor home for the convenience of having the, the refrigerator, the food, and the bathroom all in one quick area so if you had to stop real quick, you know, everything was just right there. Uh, however, what I like about the fifth wheel a little bit better uh, is I feel like I have a little bit more space because we don't have the, um, the driver's seat you know that's taking up some of that room so you know it's really a toss between the class a and the fifth wheel um, affordability wise though 
uh, you can't beat the fifth wheel. Yeah, you're talking sometimes one-third the cost of buying a, a new motorhome. Yeah, and the fact that our, our truck already is paid off, so that makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, How about you? I don't know if you noticed, but also when we looked at motorhomes and you still look at them today, it seems like most of them have different variations, but they're always the same kind of design, it seems like. That, that's true, but that's true for a lot of trailers or fifth wheels in general, too. Yeah. You have some basic uh, layouts, but there's not a whole lot of difference. The difference you really see is in the construction and the build. Yeah. But I... Oh, it seemed to me with fifth wheels, I mean, they have living rooms in the front now and all this, but if you, um, what we found, our trailer before this and this fifth wheel, is we really like the rear entertainment system because it allows you to see your television and um, uh, from the kitchen, the dining room table, anywhere in the uh, RV, you can pretty much see the television. And uh, sometimes it's frustrating to be working on a computer and you have your, uh, you're in a spot you can't see the television and something's good on <laughs> and it's like I kind of like the fact that uh, the rear entertainment uh, system has really worked out well for us. So for our next question and I've got a little list I've been working off here is uh, what did we like about full timing? And one thing that I really liked uh, when we were full timing is the uh, different areas we got to see you, you know, when we did the full-time, it was mainly on the West Coast states. Um, but, you know, every few days it seemed like it was a different environment, different surroundings, different people. Um, I really liked all the people we met. It does tend to be very social uh, in RV parks and places we stayed. Um, it's also... When it comes to being a couple, it can be very, um, trying to think what's the right word. Trying. <laughs> it can be trying, but it also can bring you together as well and make you a really um, strong functioning unit. Um, it is, the saying I really like is, it's not en enough to love your spouse. You really got to like them, and I think that is very true. Yeah. And thank goodness, you know, I think we have that relationship, so that's not an issue for us. Yeah, we've been married 34 years, so I think we like each other now. <laughs> uh, I hope. So, but yeah, I, uh, full timing, I liked the fact that if you didn't like your neighbor, you can move anytime. Yeah. Two is, uh, um, we, we used to use the RV a lot as a base camp. So sometimes we'd, uh, like I remember in Spokane, we put the RV in the spot and then we also took off from there and took a trip around the uh, Glacier. Glacier National, National Park. Park. And then down in Montana and came all the way around. And, it was, and we used motels then and came around and took us two days or so and then we came back to the RV. Mm -hmm. But it was nice to have a kind of a base camp. Um, we didn't get a chance to do a lot of boondocking, nope. if I remember. No. Nope. Um, I think... Uh, uh, Nowadays, I think I'd try it more often because of the technology we have and uh, uh, with solar and everything, uh, we might do a few more boondocking, but Sherry and I tend to be more of, uh, we like to be able to get to the grocery store when we want to, and uh, we're not, I'm not a big book reader, and you are, <laughs> so uh, it might be too much quiet time for me, but, you know, it's bad. So. We'll see. With this subject, let's, let's talk about the other side of full-time. What did, didn't you like about full-time? So, some of the things I didn't like was that every few days that we were getting up and moving, uh, so even though I liked the change of scenery, sometimes I felt like we were moving too frequently. Yeah, that was our first mistake. So, if, if I had to do it over again, I think I would spend more time at a single location before we got up and moved because it always felt like everything was rushed yeah. um, you know to get to the next spot or the next spot and if I were to do it over again I think I'd probably want to stay you know probably a month at any given spot yeah. um, um, or at least longer than you know two or three days 
because I found that part to be a little tiresome. Yeah, it was getting frustrating. When we first started, and I think a lot, I've heard that a lot of people do this, they tend to go, 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 and then, uh, and some like to drive too much and stuff. So it was a, a big reality uh, check of uh, realizing that uh, one is not to book yourself so tight and, and have all these goals, kind of go with the flow. And cost-wise, too, big time difference is when you stay a week or a month at a time at an RV place, uh, there's uh, significant discounts. And uh, also, if you can utilize the off-season time, yeah. this, the savings is amazing. Um, but the pick-up-and-go got frustrating. And our first fifth wheel, um, when we were doing that, we had a lot of manual equipment uh, for leveling all that. And it really was a pain and frustrating, and, and you kind of get cranky uh, just doing that. Now, the motorhome full-timing, it was more automatic features and made it a little easier. Um, but... Uh, fuel was getting really expensive back then too. So right. I remember I actually paid five dollars a gallon once yep. in Lakeview, Oregon. It's like, oh, that was painful. It was that was expensive. Yeah, so. One of the other areas that we had issues with back then that really isn't an issue today as much was our internet and cell phone. Um, you know. Rob was still working, doing internet business, however, the, it was a constant struggle to get connections. We'd have to either go up to the, the clubhouse and then it was dial up, or we'd have to go into town and find a, um, like a cafe that had free Wi-Fi. And we actually you know, got to the point where it's like we needed to do something better than this, so we got a satellite system. HughesNet. HughesNet, which worked fine, but once again it was manual setting it up, getting it dialed in and everything, and it was a little cumbersome to do that. So the one big difference between then and now is 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 the internet connection. Yeah, it's much better. We uh, One modification we made uh, that we're preparing for in the future is our, we turned on hotspots uh, on our cell phones so when we can't get good internet at an RV park or, or, or boondocking, if our cell phones still work, work, we still have internet through hotspot. And you can set that up through your tele, uh, your cell phone uh, service. Um, I think all of them have it. Uh, there's also what they call an air card, and we use that a little bit. Towards the end, Towards yeah. the end, and that was awesome. It worked great. Um, we use Sprint, but... Every I think every cell phone uh, package has its downfalls and, and good mm -hmm. things. We like Sprint because of the unlimited data, and so there's been times I bet you it would have cost us a fortune if we didn't have unlimited data. Yes. So, um, so let me move on to some more questions. Um, one of the things that we uh, notice on the internet a lot people tend to talk about full-timing a lot so I don't want to get caught up in full-timing all the time because we were kind of forced because of uh, the economy and stuff to go back to nine to five jobs and work our way back to what we want to do is possibly possibly full-time in the future um, but what people seem to put enough emphasis on is what people are using their RVs for and sometimes I see people have RVs don't realize what they can do with them even if they got nine to five jobs and kids and etc. So one of the things I want to point out is in the next year for us or so, we're going to put a lot of emphasis on what you can do with your RV even though you have normal jobs. Mm -hmm. So I hope uh, if you watch our videos, you'll see that we use our RV right now as a, a mobile vacation home. Mm -hmm. And you probably saw in some other videos we have is right now we have a great deal up in uh, Anacortes. Uh, with a winter rate program that's, I, I've never seen anything better than this, but we literally leave our RV up here in Anacortes, and we are only paying $85 a month, and that includes electricity. That's off-season only. Off-season only, and we only pay ec uh, more when we're here, so I believe it's $21 a day. So, uh, is it about 21 I think it's 24 
but they kind of uh, moved it a little. So, but we only use it when we come up, and because we do have uh, nine to five jobs, we come up on weekends. Excuse me, and so it makes it quite affordable because we're not pay having to pay a monthly rate, and we're not have to having to keep a separate storage unit for when we don't have it in an RV parks. This is our storage unit and we can keep it heated when we're not here so yeah. it really cuts down on you know the mold issues that we might have with us living in the state of Washington. Um, moisture is always a concern. And don't have to winterize either. That's kind of nice. I, if it's freezing on stuff I'll put winterization into the, the drainage and some of the tanks just be cautious but I don't think I really even have to do that but we also do yeah. keep the the hose line and stuff insulated and heated uh, and heated with a heat coil just during the winter months just to make sure as well yep um, but the other thing I want to point out is uh, like this place is pretty full with RVs and they're all monthlies and uh, these people are using their RVs either like a vacation home like we do They'll use them for their jobs. Some of you folks may uh, actually be a union type uh, general contractors. A lot of them uh, I've noticed have used their RVs that work here in a refinery at Anacortes. And uh, they, their family or their house or their kids are maybe even a, in another state. They use the RV as a tool. So uh, um, the, another sad thing I've seen is I've seen people using RVs for divorce situations. Um, and uh, typically, I think I've always seen the husband. <laughs> and, but uh, I guess the big thing is, uh, if your RV is sitting on the side of the house, I just say is like, you know, you could you could do a couple of things during the off season with is go put it up at a favorite place. Like if you're in Washington, I'd say go put it at the Ocean Shores for a month and take a couple weekends over the and so you know the average cost this time of year is probably around four fifty to. Six hundred dollars a month, and uh, so if you have an RV, uh, you might want to consider, uh, especially during off season, go put it in a place where it's um, you'd like to go visit during maybe where the weather isn't so nice, and uh, utilize it instead of it sitting on the side of the house getting moldy. And a trailer needs to be used, and I, I always found that the more you let equipment like this sit around, it seems like they break more when they're not being used, and um, when you're using them all the time, what things do need to be fixed, you kind of you see it right away, and you can do a lot of preventative maintenance while you're using it. So we've also seen people who used it just to get away from the rat race of the uh, Monday through Friday rat race at home, and in that case, instead of taking a week's vacation and spending you know, $150 a night for a motel room, they could actually put their RV in a, a spot for probably the same amount of money for an entire month and just go up on weekends. And the nice thing about that is everything is there. It's your own bed. It's your own comforts. Everything is set up. You're not having to travel and be towing it. So it's really, really nice. So the instant you walk in that door, you're at home and you just totally, totally relax. Yeah, this has definitely been our place where we escape. So I'm gonna change our subject and uh, keep moving along here. Um, I'm gonna talk about some of my, uh, some of the resources we've created with uh, RV Travel Buddy. And, uh, and I'll be brief on it because you can always go look at it from the site. But uh, we've been striving to make a, a nice tool called RV Travel Buddy as a resource for uh, almost any type of RVer and we're, I don't want to get stereotyped of just being full-time so full-timing is awesome and I, I wish everybody had a chance to do it but we know reality is a lot of folks are going to be working for a long time or it's not their cup of tea they want to give up their house some people just like to be uh, in their home and doing the things in the local area but uh, uh, RVs can be a part of that so we uh, created a RV education site. We also support uh, building websites for people and allowing people to make blogs. And you can go to uh, uh, helpwithblogs.com for that. We also created a, 
RV social network, which is almost feels like Facebook, but it's just RVers. And uh, we also have a place where you guys can post your videos. And uh, <laughs> um, we have equipment stopping here. Um, post your uh, uh, videos in one location that are just RV oriented, and that's called RV um, Travel Videos.com. And so uh, our biggest goal is to create all kinds of tools that are just RV related. Uh, we have great articles, there's some great videos coming out. We have great support. Uh, I gotta tell you, I really get a kick out of these nomad uh, van uh, traveling folks. There's a lot to learn from them. Uh, that lifestyle is more for uh, uh, unique folks that can handle that. Sherry and I, we need the elbow space and we have our pets and, and we're probably uh, a little more of a city slicker kind of people to do something like that, but we're not against everything. I personally think if you have a channel or a nomad van dweller that you like to uh, follow, we kind of get a kick out of Nomadic Fanatic and we get a kick out of uh, Justin, uh, just incredible up in uh, Canada. He's a kick, and but they're, um, they're they do some very good RV tips and ideas. And especially if you decide that you're going to full time, they've got some tools and ideas that you just you would have never thought of. So we really appreciate that stuff. Um, and the other thing is people ask is like what kind of equipment we're using. So uh, photography, she's probably a lot better at it than I am. So what do you use? Um, I have two cameras that I use. One is a Canon Rebel um, XTSI, I think it is. <laughs> don't Can't recall. Remember. And the other one is a, a Sony. And uh, they're just DLSRs. They're simple, easy to use. I'm not, uh, I'm very much an amateur photographer. I, um, I just enjoy taking the photos. Um, we have plenty of other equipment. Yeah. Uh, Rob has a lot of the video equipment. Go yeah. ahead. So, a lot of her pictures, and I, mine too, uh, we post at a place called NorthwestCustomImages.com. And you folks, if you got photos you like or uh, like to, you can literally put them up on that site and create your own account. And you can actually put them up for sale if you like. Um, so, we actually created. Northwest custom images for what you would say your your higher quality or better pictures that you think people might want to buy, they can do it from that platform. And yeah, we take a percentage, but uh, we also run the platform. Um, other than that, we actually uh, make sure we put them on our blogs. We put uh, the pictures we like. We share them with our families. Mm -hmm. um, we have external hard drives, a whole all this stuff. So we um, use GoPros like. Most people. Yeah, so for video and stuff, uh, I use, a, uh, we have another Canon um, T1i, is that mine? Anyway, it's a video and uh, SLR uh, camera, is that right? DLSR, that right? DLSR, but it has video. <laughs> it has video, so that's what we're using right now. We also own two GoPros. Um, we're actually doing a little bit of GoProing with this, just uh, as a test, um, which just shut off. But Anyway, uh, uh, so two GoPros. Uh, we uh, that's pretty much what we're using for that. We're actually trying out some new lighting today too um, that we got to uh, do indoor photography like this. And then to move on, um, uh, oh, you're going to say something. Go ahead. Oh, we've we've tried we tried different things. I love taking landscape photography. Um, I'd like to get more into some of the wildlife, taking birds, but I need better. Um, lenses to do that. So that's one of those wish lists. Uh, we've done a little experimentation into painting with light, which yeah, is fine. using long long exposure. Um, you know, so we just keep trying different things and some stuff we find we really like and other stuff is like uh, just not for us. I personally don't like doing portrait photography that well. But I really do enjoy the landscape and the natural wildlife. Yeah, now uh, for computers, uh, we actually just changed uh, to, we're both using uh, HP laptops now. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a 5i, I got a 7i. NB. Uh, NBs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have a quad core fancy, a little fancier thing at home that we use 
from we're not using it as much as we used to. Laptops are getting more than powerful enough to do the type of editing we want to do. Um, and so with that in mind, uh, software people ask me about is uh, for uh, editing our videos. I actually recently changed. We went from Adobe to uh, uh, Corral X7 uh, Ultimate version. And I like that because it kind of does a lot of the work for you. It's been a very easy software to use. Um, the Adobe software is a little bit more tedious, but it does uh, better quality, no doubt. But uh, the X7 Corral has been uh, I've been very happy with. Uh, Image-wise, I you've used Adobe Elements. I use uh, Photoshop Elements, and I have a little bit older version of. Photoshop uh, CS5. Uh, it works fine. I'm not big into editing photos. I tend to like to try to control my photos with my camera, but I do have the editing software if I find I want to make some corrections. And uh, for graphics and uh, pictures, I, I tend to use the Corral um, photo, photo image, it's called. Um, Photo Impact. Photo Impact, yeah. Uh, I was kind of jumping around to different kinds of software, but Photo Impact I, I've found to be the easiest to use and, and affordable. Uh, I try to use something that I can recommend to another person that it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. And so uh, that kind of sums up what we've been using for equipment and what we've been using for software. Um, another question. Donations and products. So, as you can see, we've got new shirts. I don't have them on the website yet, but they will be. They're kind of, unfortunately, we get shirts for people that want a shirt. Uh, I like polo shirts. I don't know about you guys, but t-shirts oh, drive me crazy. And I like a pocket. So, unfortunately, these new shirts that I'm wearing right now <laughs> are coming out too expensive right now. They're around $30 to $35. The, and that's barely, I, I think with shipping, I probably wouldn't even be a profit for us. But we do have the regular white shirts that uh, uh, we use to help raise money for our future endeavors for RV Travel Quest. Um, that's the site I haven't talked too much about, but that's our personal site for our personal goals that you'll see in the future. We'll talk about that in the future. Um, we also raise money with uh, um, Cinder. People tend to like our dog a lot, and we're going to talk about pets in a minute. Um, we just came out with a new stuffed animal. There's a sitting version, and then uh, I'll soon have a standing version where she has a cinder and it says RV Travel Buddy. So we thought it'd be cute to have something to help raise money for RV Travel Quest um, that has uh, our little chocolate lab and a little scarf with her name on it. And, uh, and so you can have your own little travel buddy to put in your RV or in your truck or car. So uh, all of our stuff is used to raise funds, just to help uh, our future goals, and that's exactly what it'll be used for. If anything else, it's been used for equipment that allow us to make photos for you and, and videos. So if you're at, wondering about what happens to the funds that we do collect or donations we get, it's going towards RV Travel Quest or better equipment for uh, making videos for our clients. Um, so. With that in mind, goals for goals for. How about let's talk about our pets. Yeah, let's yeah, let's talk about pets. So. So we we currently travel with our dog Cinder. She's a chocolate lab. She's about two years old, and we have a cat that we travel with as well, who is also about two and a half years old. And surprisingly, the cat travels really well. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that when we got her as a kitten, we've taken her with us all over the place. So we have a uh, cloth kennel that she travels in, and we always leave it um, open for her. And so even when we're at home or we're in our RV, that's kind of her, her kitty cave. And she just goes in there and lays down. So when we're actually traveling, uh, we just put her in her kitty cave and just take it with us, and she seems to do pretty well. So some of the resources we have for our animals that I wanted to talk about was, first of all, we were talking about with the RV, uh, 
having a large dog, we tend to want to have more of a larger area, and that's why our living room area to us is important because a large dog likes to romp and play a little bit, so uh, it's turned out nice to have a large living room area for the dog. The other thing is we also <laughs> we let our dog sleep with us, so having a uh, king-size bed is pretty important to us too. So, because uh, uh, somebody tends to hog the bed, and it's not her, it's not me, <laughs> it's the dog. And so, uh, uh, this RV, our fifth wheel, has worked out good for a large sized dog. I'm sure it's a little different for the smaller dogs. Um, the other thing is, uh, how, anything unique that you like to do with our litter, uh, kitty litter boxes? No, it's pretty much a standard litter box. Um, I keep one that has a cover on it. And um, sometimes it's not always the most convenient place to have a litter box. Um, so you just got to find out wor what works for you, for you guys. One thing I do think is really, really important to bring up is as a pet owner, to make sure and be a responsible pet owner. And make sure that you have, especially when you're traveling a lot, is so important to make sure that your pets have their shots and are completely up to date with that and also be that uh, responsible pet owner and carry um, dog bags <laughs> poopy bags poopy bags is what we call them and make sure you clean up after your pet there's nothing more um, frustrating for me to go into a place and just um, where you literally have to clean your site before you can even enjoy it yeah. because people haven't been responsible. So uh, that was a big thing that both of us wanted to talk about was make sure people use poopy bags. And it's like, if you got small dogs, you really don't have an excuse. For me, I, my attitude is if I have to pick up after a dog, give me something to work with. So that's why I like a lot a large dog. So, um, but uh, please people keep a, just keep a, a poopy bag in your back pocket and take care of your pets. It's not that big a deal. I was probably the very worst kind of guy if, uh, when it came to, you know, as years went on, it's like we used to let our dogs do anything we want. But nowadays society says, you know, um, if we're all going to have pets, it's getting to be kind of, you know, it's kind of bad with uh, uh, stuff all over the grounds and the grass and kids playing. So please, be responsible. Please, <laughs> please be responsible. Um, resources. Do we have anything unique that we use for our, uh, pets when we're traveling? Um, we have a few things unique for Cinder, but kitty-wise, we, we not really. Cats are pretty independent. They like to roam and play. They love to look out the windows. Um, our cats coming around yeah. behind us a little bit, yeah, maybe. Good timing for the kitty. So um, we also found that she loves the knock over Christmas trees, but. Uh, um, I think one of the things with Cinder is um, with a larger dog, I feel it's important if you're going to have a large dog, you need a well behaved dog. So, Cinder is a chocolate American uh, chocolate lab. So, the uh, American chocolate labs are a little bit more um, high en energy, high energy, energetic. <laughs> so, training, we went to actual schools. Down. On the large dogs, I feel it. Make sure that you use all the resources available for training yeah. your dog. Send them to take them to schools when you can. Um, any special uh, uh, collar equipment that's available Stop. that will help keep them under control for training. Use all of them. Um, I know people have uh, different feelings about different types of tools to use for your dog, but the important thing is the dog should be under control. And if they're not on a leash and they come up to somebody, that they're a safe dog. Uh, when you're traveling, you're going to be around a lot of folks and strangers, and uh, uh, I think we all have a responsibility to make sure we, our pets are safe for, uh, for the community. Uh, let's see. Next subject would be um, cell phones. Anything you, I think we talked about it a little bit. Cell phone-wise, we use Sprint. I think... Pretty much everybody is aware of cell phones. It's part of our culture today, so you just need to find out what works best for you. Yep. And 
cell phones are great because you can also use them for your internet connection like hotspot and so for internet that was my next subject is internet um, services we uh, often we rely on the RV parks that we're at if we're boondocking or we don't have a, a RV park with a good service hotspot or air card that pertains to your uh, cell phone service uh, they work pretty darn good and I also know that people still use the HughesNet type of uh, service, uh, satellite. Um, the only thing I'd say about that is you need to realize that um, those are pulsating um, systems. So um, they're, they'll have some issues, at least they used to, with videos and some uploading uh, issues if you're doing web design like, us, uh, like I do. Um, so that's about all I have for that part. Um, Next subject. Our bed. Our bed. Okay, uh -huh. we had an issue uh, with our bed. Um, a lot of RVs come standard with a queen size. Our bed at home is a king size, which is what we're used to. And so one of the reasons we did choose to go with the Montana was because we could very easily uh, convert to a king size bed. The problem we have found in pretty much every trailer we've ever had is the mattresses. Yeah. Mattresses that come standard tend to be a little uh, springy. Not the best of quality. <laughs> and so we have found, since we're not little skinny little spring chickens here, we have found that the the mattresses just don't seem to handle our weight. Our weight that well for long a longer period of time when you were for as much as we use it so pretty much every um, RV we've had we have upgraded and we've been fortunate because we've been able to upgrade to just a standard either a standard king size bed or a standard queen and, and that has worked really well made a huge difference when it comes to sleeping yeah now we sleep like babies but did we put a 10 inch a uh, 10 inch uh, diameter? Yeah, we did a 10 inch um, foam mattress, uh, the the memory foam, and it was actually pretty easy to get in because it's all rolled up like a, a, a taco, Yeah. and we literally just kind of untied it and it rolled out, <laughs> it goes poof, <laughs> and then you just let it sit for a couple hours until it inflates and stuff by yeah. itself. And it's very, very comfortable. And that was the first time I ever dealt with one of those. It was a crazy. It's like I can't believe this is the mattress. It was all rolled up in a tube. Anyway, but it was harder to get the old mattress out than it was to put the new one in. So. Um, yeah, it it was. It they are really heavy though. So once you get it in place, it's like, you know, it's not easy to move it around. Um, but I definitely, I I like the memory foam. And I definitely like the king size mattress better. Yeah, so to wrap this up, my last subject I want to talk about is age, getting older, or whatever. Some of the things that we've noticed through the years and also noticed through videos. Um, my first uh, subject on that is, as well, I told you, we really enjoy watching the Nomad and the Van Dweller type of folks. Um, I think, another, and I've seen folks our age doing it too, but. I've found over the years there's a certain things that you just well, why I like an RV in the first place, but um, and and certain pieces of equipment that really come in handy getting older. Um, I'm still, I mean, we're still in our young 50s here, but um, you know, there's still a few more aches and pains, and we gain a little more weight, and etc. And and we notice, uh, you know, health is more questionable on certain things. But um, one of the uh, big things I wanted to talk about was what to consider with some of your RVs so I could never like be in a van anymore or do any I can't even sleep in the back of the truck anymore I think the number one thing is uh, with our age is, uh, is I like to have my own restroom with me and I want to be able to stop when I'm, I I don't know how many folks you've been driving along on the freeway and it's like and you see 34 miles to the next rest area and just like I think I'm gonna die um, so RVs I don't care if you got a motorhome or a fifth wheel or a trailer 
Um, the best thing about an RV is when you're traveling, you can stop anywhere you want. And, and, and you'll have a restroom available or you want to grab a Coke or keep something cold, whatever. That, at my age, and I think a lot of folks at this age, is actually a very important issue. And I know nobody really talks about it, but um, I, th I know a lot of us have different health issues um, as we get older. And having a restroom and having a, a place to lay down or take a snooze or maybe uh, you have to rest a little you have uh, your RV to do that and still have the privilege of seeing this great country of ours. So equipment wise on the fifth wheel, uh, some things I've really noticed have made a big difference. So Montana recently just changed with the uh, uh, four step system and I don't know if you like it any better. But it is. It's also nice for your pets, especially if you have smaller dogs and stuff. Having that four step uh, can really make a difference for your pets. Um, if you have older pets, you know, it makes a huge difference. I think the other thing we noticed is we also take the RV down to, down south to uh, her folks place, which are, both of them are in their 70s now, and I've, and they don't get up stairs and stuff as well. I've noticed with the new RV, with the new steps, when they come in to visit us when we're staying at their property, uh, it's much easier for them to get in and out of our RV. Mm -hmm. um, so that just tells me I'm getting a snapshot of what I may need when I'm in my 70s is I'm going to be a little slower and my balance may not be as good and uh, having this uh, shorter steps definitely is a, a bonus as far as I'm concerned about getting older. Um, the other thing I uh, really like about uh, the Montana, I'm going to talk about one more thing, is our bicycle rack. The Montana's put an insert in the back, so now, I don't know how many of the other fifth wheels are doing that, but now our bicycle rack plugs right in the back of that, and I don't know about a lot of you folks that have got older RVs, I bet you anything you're tying your bicycles to your, to the ladder. To the ladder. And how many, I mean, uh, I haven't mastered that. I think at one time I had 18 bungee cords to hold our, uh, our, uh, our, our bikes in place, but now... It's very convenient. The new bike racks that they have out, it, it's literally you, you, you slide it into the, the hitch off the back and it, it's put your bikes in there and cinch it down. It probably takes less than five minutes, five minutes to do it. It's awesome. much, much nicer uh, than it used to be. Plus, we just recently put a new zip cover over the top. We got a camping world. So now you put the cover down, you put your bikes on top of it, pull up the cover, you zip it up, um, and just a couple of bungees just to keep it from wobbling too much, and done deal. And uh, I'm really impressed with that. So I think for us, riding our bikes is going to be important to keep get, try to get some of those weight off. So uh, I'm very pleased when we do hit the road, it, um, our bikes aren't going to be one of those, ugh, I don't want to take them off or put them back on. It's, it's the ease of it makes a big difference. Yep, and then uh, the levelers. The levelers, oh lord. When we were full timing, I think that was probably the closest to thinking about this uh, divorce. No, but. <laughs> Not but I tell you, I don't know if you, I know you guys know the story, but how many times I was outside cranking those things at 80 degree weather or 90 degree weather, trying to level the RV, and Sherry in here with a little leveler, and she goes, Oh, the back quarter's got to come up another inch, and it's like you're dying already. And you get it, and then she goes, "Oh, maybe you better go to the other front one." And you're running all over, cranking this thing, dying. And so by the time you're done, you're just like, "Don't talk to me. Just don't talk to me." Now, the so uh, I wouldn't talk to you. I would just go out and do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then she embarrasses it, so I go back and crank again. But one of the other uh, items I really like on the Montana is the new levelers. Uh, the levelers, uh, we had those uh, automatic levelers in our 40-foot motorhome, mm -hmm. and it was a bless blessing come true, I'm telling you. A push of a button, and you just feel that thing leveling itself and taking care of it. Or I see still that a lot of the RV uh, fifth wheels and trailers are still using manual le levelers, and they work, and you get, that's what it is. But I'm telling you... Um, if you had the opportunity in Montana, I believe it's made them standard, the automatic hydraulic levelers on the on the new Montanas is 
a blessing. I'm telling you. It's worth all, it. All I do now is we back the trailer in. We push one button to bring, bring it up a little. We pull the truck out. I push it. Um, uh, then after that, um, the levelers, I haven't mastered this, are supposed to remember that height. So when you go and reset everything, especially it goes back. But after that, I just push one button and say level. And uh, um, before I do that, I put boards under each one and uh, push one button and they start coming down and the thing kind of gunk, 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 gunk. And before you know it, it's level. I don't even have to put, unless I'm in an extreme situation, I don't even have to put wood under the tires or anything. If, unless I have a really bad angle, I don't see any reason for putting uh, wood under the tires. But uh, the other thing is with the Montana, once I mastered the, the controls, is when you're ready to leave, you press retract, everything retracts, and it's supposed to go back up to the level of when you lo unloaded it. So I haven't mastered that setting yet, but um, it's pretty slick. So if you have the opportunity as you're getting older and you don't want to be out in 90 degree weather if you're down in Yuma or something and you have to get crank, the levelers get the levelers <laughs> so so this has been a long enough video and I just want to take the time that I hope uh, everybody has a really good 2015 um, uh, we're just ending the holidays here um, a lot of great things are happening with RV travel buddy uh, we appreciate uh, folks have been donating or uh, are interested in buying some of our products. They're all for a good cause. Um, our goals this year will be uh, better equipment, better editing, better stories, uh, trying to do more interviews. Uh, Sherry is going to try to do more of the interviews with me because she's a charming to have with me. And so I'm really ha glad that she's uh, participating. And uh, Yeah, I'm a little camera shy. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, photos, we'll be doing a lot more photography. We're gonna, our goal is actually do more painting by light and also a more long exposure mm -hmm. uh, photography. And uh, uh, we'll kind of see how the year goes. As far as the future with RVing, we'll, uh, as time goes on, we'll be revealing more of what we have going on. Uh, I, I highly uh, hope that everybody subscribes to our YouTube channel channel and RV Travel Quest is the main site of me and Sherry um, and it's sponsored by RV Travel Buddy so you'll see things that work together but uh, and we use the same channel on YouTube but uh, that's our and Cinder has her own website <laughs> and that's what my dog did today .com. And it's a really cute site, so anytime we get something funny with Cinder, and that happens a lot, um, uh, she her site gets updated. And we also ask you to uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, and RV Travel Buddy's got its own Twitter. And uh, we love talking to you. Send us notes, send us articles. If you'd like to write for us or like to put some articles um, on RV Travel Buddy, and you have links that maybe even affiliate links I don't mind as long as they're uh, uh, tasteful uh, we'll publish them for you as long as it's a good story and uh, um, uh, is it's got to be RV oriented we'll, we'll give you as much recognition as possible you have anything to add? I think we've covered it pretty well for this time yeah I'm sorry for a long interview uh, a long it's kind of a long interview but at the same time uh, kind of gives you an idea of what our goals are and where we're going and uh, stay tuned for shorter videos of things that we'll be up to, our goals for the future, some equipment we're adding, we'll be uh, doing things on solar. Uh, I think we're just going to do a mobile solar system, something affordable and easy to use because we're not really in the hardcore and we do have a generator. And uh, any upgrades we do, uh, our emphasis for 2012 will be... Well, 2015. 2015, sorry. Um, our goal with the truck is to get it tuned up, running really well, replacing anything that needs to be done. It is a 10 year old truck in a sense, a little more than that. So uh, we have to make sure that it's running at its best, but um, a good diesel can last for a long time. So it's um, uh, that'll be our goal the next year is to get that running good. Good maintenance. Yep. So. From me and Sherry, uh, have a nice holiday, 
and have a great 2015 and thank you for watching. See you later. Bye.